the real question is, do we have enough knowledge technology right now with genomic classifiers and uh, sophisticated imaging, advanced imaging, to identify nearly all men who have favorable features, PSA, Gleason, T category, percent positive biopsies, all favorable, yet based on molecular markers and imaging would suggest to the contrary. I'll show later today some data that supports that we are getting close, but we're not exactly there. I can't tell you that with, let's say, a decipher score and a multi-parametric MRI and perhaps a PSMA scan, that we have everything we need with 100% certainty to say that this individual with a 3 plus 4 and a single core um, does not need treatment. We're getting there, but we're not completely there. But the tools are emerging. And so I think that you know, the combination of genomic classifiers, advanced imaging, and in addition, uh, the makeup of the patient, something we don't talk about much, but we've talked about this lifestyle modification thing. So is the gentleman a person who exercises every day, eats well, reduces stress, maybe you know, by, through exercise, meditation, goes and visits regularly with his primary care, uh, has his blood pressure under good control, uh, make sure he doesn't smoke and doesn't drink. I mean, these things have not been associated directly with prostate cancer progression. However, they have all been associated with immune surveillance. And what I mean by that is, it goes into this other complementary medicine construct, but you know, what causes cancer to begin with is a breach of our body to fail to recognize that the cancer is even there. And immune surveillance is something that's designed in our body to do that. And what pumps the immune system are all the things I just said, diet, exercise, reduce stress, compliance with normal health measures, don't smoke, don't drink, or drink in moderation. So I think that uh, if you think about those things as well, they may play a role.